Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Dr. Pratipa Chahan Desaid and I hope all of you are doing well and your preparation is going right on the track. Right, so uh, in the previous videos, obviously we have discussed about the strategy, the subject wise timeline and how uh, things should go ahead for the preparation. Now, uh, I'll be discussing about some very important uh, tips, tricks, skills, you can call it anyway. Right, uh, but these will be the most important and the crucial pointers which the NEET PG aspirant should take into consideration and should keep in mind while they are going in their preparation ahead. Right, so the first and the foremost confusion about or you know difficulty in uh, preparation is that we are not getting our MCQs correct. My number of score, my number of correct in the GT is not increasing. Where I am lacking, what is my problem? So I guess the first and the foremost thing will be your MCQ solving skill. That is the most important skill I guess for this exam because it's an objective exam. It is going to ask you 200 questions in the form of MCQ pattern and the answer is right there on your screen you just have to be smart enough to assess what is right right so now uh, my technique of this MCQ obviously in the initial uh, initial prep phase of preparation you will be uh, not able to figure out that what is the right way to solve the MCQ but as and when you are going to attempt your GDs and you will go ahead you will be able to figure out what is the right methodology now according to me I feel the 200 questions in the exam they should be divided in three set of questions like you'll start from the question number one and you'll keep on jumping to question to question and you'll figure out that there will be three sets of questions. One set we will be very clearly aware of that particular question. You even know what they're asking. What is the diagnosis, treatment, investigation, whatever. You know the answer and you'll mark it. This is one set of question. Second set of question will be I know the topic. I have read this particular thing in my notes, but I'm not sure what they're asking and whether or not I'll be able to come to a diagnosis to this particular thing. Okay, this is the second set of question. Third is something very new. Like, for example, in EPG 23, there were three to four questions which was very new to me and I was not aware of those questions. So there is nothing to panic because if they are new, they're new for everybody. They're not, not new only for you, right? Now, in the first set of questions where you know and where you are aware of that particular uh, topic and you know the answer also, mark them with calm and cool mind patiently that yes, that's my right answer. Okay, so you will be marking that and you will be going ahead with the question. Please do not put such questions for review because in the end what is going to happen, you are going to mark that reviewed question also wrong. Because in the initial phase of the exam, you know, we are highly stable and calm and I guess the number of uh, the probability of marking a question right is very very high at this point of time later when you get exhausted you know you might change your mind or you will be going through a lot of questions which might change your answer so i don't think it's a very wise idea of keeping a lot of questions for review i guess for the questions you are sure about and you know the answer for that thing do not mark that for review and you can go ahead uh, with that question you know after being very very sure this is first set of question the second set of questions as i told that will be that you are aware of the topic but you do not know what is going to be the answer of this question right so here the technique of ruling out will work ruling out means out of those four questions two of the options will be you know a little strange and they'll be out of the box so you can completely remove them the remaining two options you have to take a smart call after judging the entire scenario of the question after coming to a particular diagnosis and then taking a call okay this question is asking me this thing and i think this option is highly probable it will be the answer right this is ruling out because any which way we are not sure that these two options may say which is exactly right but we are sure that yes if i'm ruling out on a certain basis then then this option which i'm marking will be absolutely right or if not there are probability there are chances that 90 to 95 percent this question will be marked right right third set as i told will be something which is very new now the questions which are new i guess in first reading though i will really and really advise you to just skip these questions for a while do not waste your mind and energy in thinking new question gaya. now what it's okay you know sometimes the examiner has to put some questions to you know trick the student or maybe you know trick the aspirant or make them a little confused so it's okay in the first set you will be doing the questions which you are completely sure of in the second set you'll be doing a ruling out method and in the third set you will come to these new questions where a calculated guess will work 
ओके हियर तुक्का तो आई डोंट थिंक वी विल हैव द करेज टू डू बिकॉज नेगेटिव होता है बट इवन इफ यू हैव टू गेस द आंसर आई गेस इट हैज टू बी कैलकुलेट इनफ एंड स्मार्ट इंटेलिजेंट इनफ आफ्टर यू एनालाइज द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन एंड यू फील लाइक ओके फाइन नो दिस दिस माइंड बी द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन लेट्स जस्ट टेक अ I guess like four to five new new questions which were there in NEET PG twenty three. I didn't give a shot for around like two two to three of them, but two of them I was like okay fine let's make a guess and let's go ahead with that right. So this is how your uh, mind should work at that point of time. You should not be panicking at that point of time that okay fine you know if there's a new question. Four questions. If they are new in front of me, my rank is you know now not going to come. No no no, it's not that like that. Huh? Like that like that. Okay. Now, second thing is that uh, concising the notes, right? A lot of students they keep on asking, you know, that how is it possible for us to concise nineteen subjects, vast syllabus, in few pages or in uh, a content or in a notebook which is easily revisable, seven to ten days before the exam or a week before the exam? It is very much possible. You should know the right strategy. You should know the tricks of how you have to actually go ahead with that. Now, in the first reading. i will advise all of you to just go with this particular thing uh, reading of the notes from head to toe don't do anything nothing extra is supposed to be done at this point of time you just have to go and read your notes um clear your concepts read your notes actively and have a very very strong base of the notes okay where you have a very good memory okay fine this portion is in my notes at this place Now, in your subsequent revisions, you will start doing these two things. You will start making your twentieth notebook, the idea of which and the format of which, and how you have to go ahead with it. I have released in my previous video also. You will make start making your twentieth notebook one, and you will start making your sticky notes. Sub uh, topic wise, like for example, uh, if I'm reading eclampsia, okay, so I know these are the diagnostic keywords. For severe eclampsia, for pre-eclampsia, for impending, for gestational hypertension, uh, for chronic hypertension. So I need to know these three, four keywords in each one of them to be able to come to a diagnosis. Because only if you will be able to come to a diagnosis, you will go to the next step. Now, if you are not able to make a diagnosis, I don't think there is any use of attempting that question also. Because फिर आप confused हो कि what next? so you need to write those keywords and you will be revising those keywords in your subsequent revisions to just make a memory of those keywords because any which ways nobody is going to ask you entire eclampsia from head to toe they will give you a scenario they'll give you certain keywords you have to come to a diagnosis either or they'll ask you next step right so that is that should happen from your first revision and from your second revision as i have told you earlier also you can start your last minute revision topics from your first revision also but you can uh, i mean any which Way. that's your call first revision or second revision complete your 20th notebook in your second revision and start making your last minute revision topics ka list which is going to really help you in the end again i have told about this last minute revision topics ka list also in my previous videos so uh, that is really going to help you as well and third thing will be at this point of time you will be able to figure out that these are certain there are certain overlapping topics in the subjects and you are going to mark those topics in those particular subjects now for example toxicology that means poisoning is there in forensic medicine also and it's there in the med uh, medicine as well so from forensic medicine point of view do it from fmt right but the remaining part of pathophysiology clinical features symptoms management everything do it only and only from medicine do not waste that time in doing it in forensic medicine secondly for example pediatrics and medicine now uh, apart from neonatology and growth and development in pediatrics rest of it is completely uh, overlapping with medicine like you know it's pediatric is mini medicine so if at all you do neonatology and growth and development religiously from pediatrics but remaining topics from medicine and why you are doing medicine you can just have a look on you know pediatric point of view if there is any change in the protocol or in the treatment and you can make that addition there only in your medicine notes so uh, this is going to help you in revising medicine and pediatrics together at a single place and you will not be wasting your time i've seen and even i did it uh, myself in my last uh, 
attempt like i did this mistake i did every single topic from every subject so it was you know taking a lot of time for me and i was like okay i have done toxicology poisoning from forensic medicine i will be doing it from medicine also i have done pediatrics from this particular place i mean from pediatrics and i will be doing it in medicine as well so that waste a lot of your time so if you know in the very beginning in your first or second division that these are my overlapping topics and i am supposed to do it from one single subject only that is going to save a lot of your time right so that is how you will be uh, concising your notes and in your subsequent revisions you will be obviously making completing your 20th notebook and last minute revision topics and your sticky notes so these three to four things your 20th notebook your last minute revision topics your sticky notes will come to your rescue while you are revising your entire notes so suppose if you're picking up anatomy you will not be jumping onto the entire anatomy from head to toe you will be reading your 20th notebook you will be revising your last minute revision topics you will be going through your sticky notes you will be revising your previous year's questions and if at all you have your dvt or vtr sessions you have a resource to tell you what are the important topics you will only revise those from your notes not the entire notes okay third thing uh, will be the encoding technique of learning now what is this exactly now while we are learning you know we feel that there are a lot of relatable words like for example in biochemistry in glycogen storage disease when you talk about uh, anderson's disease and cori's now anderson's me there is a deficiency of branching enzyme and cori's me there is a deficiency of debranching enzyme so a with b c with d in fact it's a mnemonic also but this is how you will relate certain things sometimes the main disease that name of the disease suppose starts with m and its clinical feature and its diagnostic feature and its initial stage uh, initial investigation of choice its initial treatment of choice everything is starting you know with the alphabet m so that is how you can you know remember and recall that is how you can feed it in your memory that i edit somewhere i'm not able to recall it exactly because sometimes in the options you know uh, that particular disease is going to come and the option will have only one of them which starts with a particular alphabet or maybe you know with that particular alphabet so it's very easy for us to understand this thing while we are solving this mcq this is very variable and very personal from individual to individual so there is no pressure that you have to actually you know figure out ways and figure out words like this to go ahead i feel it uh, just you know um, make it a little easier while we are revising our notes and while we are uh, 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 solving the mcqs right then fourth most important thing will be that revision recall memory of notes because that is what is going to help you in cracking the mcq at the end of the day not reading the entire notes from head to toe will help you what part of the notes you are able to recall remember in the exam while you are solving the mcq is going to make a change not every uh, person who is getting a rank has read or remembered or you know learned their notes from head to toe it's that they have learned the most important part of the notes and they have figured out ways to remember that part of the notes while they are solving the mcqs so memory of the notes according to me is something like you know that i am uh, aware okay fine if this question is front of me on the screen then this topic was uh, on this page in my notes right side pe tha left side pe tha it was under this particular topic so i'll get a hint okay fine you know it is asking me about ms mitral stenosis so i'll be you know uh, thinking on that particular line i'll go ahead uh, and utilize my question or utilize my thought process in that particular thing right so i guess you need to have that memory of your notes and it is going to only and only come with repeat number of revisions i always and always emphasize the fact of number of revisions because it is very very important you need to revise one source 10 times and not 10 source each individually right do not do that mistake please just you know stick to one source and keep on revising it in number of times and for the revision what is uh, that you are supposed to revise what should be my uh thing which i am supposed to revise or how do i analyze what are my weak areas or what are my volatile topics that is going to happen with your previous year's questions well when you'll be solving that secondly when you are giving your gts you'll be figuring out what are your weak areas and what are the topics you were not able to recall while you appeared for that particular gt you are going to mention and make a list of that and you will be revising this list every day like i have told in my earlier video as well day of a neat pg aspirant uh video that in the morning you will be revising your 20th notebook and your previous year's questions and in the night before you go to bed you will be revising your volatile topics list or last minute revision topics so this is how you will be revising your list of volatile topics or the round topics or the last minute revision topics every day and that is how your weak topics will become stronger as the exam will approach i have seen a lot of students doing this mistake we have done biochemistry 
I read this thing in my first reading. Now I will be revising only and only in my first version. That is going to happen after one to one and a half months. You will forget everything about biochemistry. Biochemistry is so volatile. Biochemistry, uh, pharmacology, markers and pathology, and uh, um, ophthalmology. Like it's so volatile. You'll forget it the next day. So leave about uh, thinking that you know you'll be able to recall stuff after one to one and a half months. It will be appearing very new to you at that point of time. So I really, really want you to understand. the importance of revising your volatile topics every day if not every day at least every alternate day because likewise if you are jumping onto back back chemistry there are so many cycles you know so if you revise at least two to three cycles every day i guess till the time your first division will come or your second division will come those cycles will not you know appear new to you you will be very much acquainted with them right so that's the importance of revision and that's the importance of revision in a way that you will be able to recall and remember this particular thing in the exam trust me when i say that if you start revising your topics every day your weak topics your volatile topics every day you will be so confident in your preparation towards the end because at the end of the day the stuff which we are aware of and which we know is not going to give you palpitations nervousness is cheez ki hoti hai ki i am not able to remember the volatile topics now what to do and if you are already revising these volatile topics every day i guess you are already at an advantage okay then the final thing will be that is those is solving the entire question bank a right decision at this point of time i am saying no solving the entire question bank will not do any justice to your preparation will not uh, give you any extra advantage or will not help you in getting few extra marks will not help at all my belief is solve your previous year's questions as many number of times as you can secondly if at all you want to go for the question bank go for solving the custom modules with the tags of previous year's questions clinical questions image based questions one liners that is how you will be solving the most important part of the question bank in the form of custom modules and in fact in the custom module you can even set your timer also i am solving 50 questions i'll be solving it for around 25 to 30 minutes i'll be you know setting this time in my head or maybe obviously a clock head in front of me and i'll be solving this jab hum question bank solve karte hain at that time we solve it very carelessly right galat bhi ho raha hai to it's okay so i don't think it is very much uh, going to boost your confidence but custom modules it is going to tell you okay out of 50 you have solved these many wrong and now this is your percentage and you have to improve in the next custom module so please do not fall in the trap or in the myth of solving the entire question bank and feeling okay if i have solved the entire question bank i am going to get a decent rank no it is not that way uh, not everybody gets a good rank and the reason is because you know not everybody has a good strategy not everybody is able to follow the right strategy to uh, crack the exam because all of us are reading the same notes all of us are solving the same question bank then what is that what makes a difference in uh, the rankers and in somebody who is not able to get the decent rank that's the way that's the uh, trick that they know the strategy they know how they have to actually go ahead with that okay and final thing that uh, fomo you know i am uh, am i leaving something if i am not going for this particular source if i am not opting for uh, the question bank of this source if i am leaving btr of this or if i am not going for dvt or if i am not able to go for the question bank of my am i leaving something no trust me your single source which you have been following from the beginning is your only and final source stick to that source till the end of the preparation do not change your source be it anything coming your way be anybody who is telling you coming that you know this is not the right source you should follow the for this particular subject and you should be opting for this thing don't do that it is only and only going to create confusions in the end and you will be very nervous that at this point of time now what should i be revising from what resource so stick to one source that is going to be you know the perfect decision you can ever make right so i guess that's it these were certain tricks which you know certain tips from my side uh, which i felt are very important for you to keep in your mind while you are preparing and they will surely help you if you are actually figure out how you have to incorporate them in your revisions and in your preparation right so that's it all the best and take care of yourself keep going with the preparation keep going keep hustling do not panic do not nervous do not stop take regular breaks please please take regular breaks highly 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 important and uh, just keep on revising one single stuff n number of times solve your previous year's questions as many number of times as you can and do keep your revisions right on the track
ओके ऑल द बेस्ट बाय